Trevor Allen getting the start tonight in the two hole. A huge drive by Nate Causey. That one's gone. See you later, baseball. All the way to Rural Road as the Sun Devils make a statement here in the first. A huge solo shot for Nate Causey. That one's going to be his first home run of the season. Working in his sixth inning and a quick shot down the first baseline. That one stays fair. Extra bases for Dina Tolley. Celsi gets caught in the corner. He's going to try to leg out a triple. We'll see if he has enough in the Jets, and he does. Dina Tolley, a leadoff triple for the Sun Devils. That's his first of the season. Dalton Jeffries, the Friday night starter for California, 5'11. 175 pounds. The California native gives up the RBI to RJ Ibarra. Great piece of contact hitting right up the chute. Sun Devils jump on the board, 1 0. Obviously, there was no need for an overturn. Higgins was comfortable with the call he made. Taken off on the pitch, swung through and missed. The throw down the second, got him. Strike him out, throw him out. Sun Devils come back up to the plate. What a way to end the top of the 10th inning. Has a line drive ball to center field. That one tucks in front of Pearson. We'll see if there's a play at the plate. The cutoff man throws in. Peavy House in time. Sun Devils take the lead. Welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. Golden Bears unable to score in the first half inning. Had their chance, but now going to have to take care defensively with their starting pitcher. As here's a replay. Allen just doing a great job on the side. And that was an absolute laser beam to home plate. He's got that one hop down from right field. I've seen him make some great plays. Last year he uh, jumped over one of the construction fences up at uh, Evans, Evans Field and uh, almost made the ESPN highlight reels. So just like TV House over on left, he did last year jumping over the tarp and making a great play. He definitely has some of the best corner outfielders in the Pac-12 defensively. And they aren't too shabby at the plate either. First pitch, a strike against Johnny Seawold. His number is there. As Seawold has a hit in 10 out of the last 11 games. Been a phenomenal leadoff hitter for the Sun Devils come conference time. But he falls in a hole 0-2. Not swinging that BB core bat on the first two offerings by Kyle Porter. We'll give the stat line of Porter on the next pitch as he's a very similar kind of pitcher almost to Lillick in terms of controlling the speed of the game. That one misses just a tad. He's 4-2 and two on the season, a 2.72 ERA, and 35 strikeouts in 46 innings, but making a pay on that pitch was Johnny Seawold as he goes opposite field to give the Sun Devils a leadoff base runner. It'll be interesting how how Cal works with some of our base runners, especially Seawald, one of the faster guys on the team, getting down the line. And could be could be a tough night. Well, Celsi already gone aggressive in the first inning. We'll see if Tim Esme and Johnny Seawald want to do the same. Coach Mike Benjamin calling the shots over at third. But again, you have to keep in mind it's lefty versus lefty pitcher. So we'll see how good of jumps they can get. As that's what we're dealing with. Seawold, the sophomore, against the senior pitcher. As Johnny Seawold, five for six on the base pass this season. Wasting no time. Allen to the shortstop. This one could be two. Six, four, three, just like that. Clear the bases. Campbell, Tanerowitz to Halamanderis. Two new middle infielders defensively for the Golden Bears. No problem on that one. So not even having a chance to try to play some of that signature Sun Devil small ball. Even a hit and run. First pitch swinging aggressive was Trevor Allen getting the start tonight in the two hole. A huge drive by Nate Causey. That one's gone. See you later baseball. All the way to Rural Road as the Sun Devils make a statement here in the first. A huge solo shot for Nate Causey. That one's going to be his first home run of the season. 
And that one's a surprise even for those in the press box up here as he's been waiting for that one all season long. It took him long enough and aggressive pays off. I forgot what year it was, but I remember uh, we're getting ready in the locker room after batting practice and uh, Brandon Cunningham comes up and says, yeah, the police just showed up here. We were hitting too many balls on the rural. <laughs> well, Stephen and the Stampy police come in for Causey because that one definitely was heading for the headlights. And it brings up RJ Abar, and you could see right away that the coaching staff of the Sun Devils talked with their batting lineup and wants them to be aggressive early. Three runs last night. Got to believe they want more. But Ybarra falls in an 0-2 hole. Two strikes thrown by Kyle Porter right there. Porter's a very solid Saturday night starter for California. And he's the guy you want to have on the mound to try to break a four-game losing skid, but that one comes too far inside, and Yabara will wear it. So a two-out base runner for the Sun Devils. And in comes the man with a hitting streak, currently at 11. Third baseman, Dalton Di Natale. So, Matt, we've already seen two hit batters here in the first inning, one from either side as the starting pitching trying to be the aggressors, but right now it seems like the bats are doing that. Three hits combined between the two teams in the first five outs. I know Coach Esme preaches hunt the fastball. You see a fastball, you swing it just like we saw RJ. He doesn't, he takes his hack at every pitch you can get the bat to. I've seen him take a ball that was about in the left-handed batter's box and drove it for a double but he does not get cheated. Saw a lot of opposite field hits last night too. I don't think the fans will believe me, but in a three to two ball game, there were 20 total hits. So it comes to stringing some together. Obviously a home run helps, forget about stringing them together, just do it himself, Nate Causey here in the first inning. And that's been the lone run. As a 2-0 count on Dino Tolley, there's the numbers as he's been on a tear in the start of conference play. But now gets the first strike on him. But those 3-2 games are typical Pac-12 games. Pac-12 is a big pitching and defensive conference as compared to the SEC, which is big bats, big, big runs. And you have to see a lot of that when you get to go travel and play all these different teams during the course of the year. And there's an off-speed pitch that gets away from Mitchell Cranston, so advancing in the second base is R.J. Ybarra. Now Dalton Di Natale with a 3-1 count, runner in scoring position, leads the or second on the team, excuse me, in doubles and home runs. Trying to extend his hitting streak in the first inning. So we saw this issue last night too with the pitching staff from California. That was just a pitch from Porter to see if Di Natale would chase. He did not, so a free base puts two runners on for the Sun Devils for the freshman catcher, Brian Servin. But last night, it was kind of a similar story in which the Sun Devils in the late innings, it was the ninth. Johnny Sewell, the leadoff batter, reached base with a walk and then a pass ball and a wild pitch, got him over to third. So a little bit loosey-goosey on the, on the hill for the Golden Bears to start this series. We'll see if they can tighten up the loose screws. That one's fouled back and it's gonna go out of play more than likely unless it drifts back, but that one's easily about 10 rows up. Took a big clank too off the bleachers. Yeah, Cranston threw his mask back uh, after looking under the ball and almost hit, hit surfing there. That was a nice little catcher's love there. So 
So we'll have a word between Cranston and Porter as he calls for time. So both Cranston and Servin. The backstops for Friday and Saturday. Opportunity for the Sun Devils to kind of open up the offense a little bit here in the first and give Ryan Kellogg something to work with. A pitcher's dream on the mound to have an early lead, but swung through and missed. Good cut from Servin. Better pitch by Porter. One and two the count. Being a left-handed pitcher myself, I do have to say, both these pitchers are pitching from the third base side of the, the rubber. Gives the hitter, that gives the hitter a lot more time to see the ball. So I've always pitched on the first, first base side. And hide the ball, and the ball seems to jump on people. As we see here, you can kind of see the ball come out of the pitcher's hand very early. So that, that could be a big help for, for batters these days. It's all about deception as a pitcher. Interesting point. That time long enough for Servin to sit off on that pitch. It was just below the kneecaps. Good location by Porter, but didn't get the freshman catcher to swing. This time he does as the shortstop Campbell there. And there's the third out. So Sun Devils get the run they needed as they had six batters come to the plate. So one run on two hits. No Golden Bear errors. Two runners left on. 1-0 the score, end of the first. 